Let's now see how we can create transparent materials in Maxil Render now. This is our material from previous lesson and uh, I'll create a brand new material. So if you remember correctly from previous lessons, these reflectance guys and this roughness are intertwined and uh, they have a major impact on non-transparent surfaces. There is a similar interplay of settings for transparent objects with this transmittance, this ND, and this currently grayed out attenuation. These three guys are also interconnected. Now, let me first tackle this ND setting a little bit, and uh, this actually stands for index of refraction, which can be a little bit confusing because uh, this guy is also index of refraction, but uh, let's simplify and say that this value here, this nd, is the one that you want to care about. You can see the effects of this nd value only if roughness is low. So let's just for purpose of demonstration put roughness to zero and uh, let's also force this Fresnel, which is uh, concept that I explained in previous lesson. Now, in really layman terms, this ND value would simply define how much shiny or how much specular an object is. So, for example, if I set this value to 2, you will see that this object is now less shiny and specular. Now, if I put this to high value, such as 10 or even 100, this object would become increasingly shiny and uh, increasingly specular. Now, if you want to stay in realistic values, I wouldn't suggest using anything more than a hundred in any case. And the uh, physically possible values are much, much lower. But uh, then that really depends on this K, which is a extinction coefficient, which is really geeky and there is absolutely no need for you to know that but uh, what is important is that you can create any material without this k value so this k value is uh, let's say only needed when you need uh, high-end precision which uh, we don't need in most of the cases let's set this to default value and uh, this transmittance and this nd work together but only if this transmittance is set to something else than black because black means no transparency and any other color would immediately instruct Maxwell that you want a transparent material and uh, if you want full transparency then you will have to use white so white is completely transparent and black is not transparent at all and uh, I will show you just in few minutes what happens when you put a color there and uh, you probably expected that this would uh, become immediately transparent but uh, it didn't the reason for that is this attenuation setting so notice when I go back to black this attenuation is grayed out so I cannot set it unless this is something else than black color. So let's go back to white and uh, currently this object is not transparent at all. And if you want to make it transparent, you'll have to change the attenuation distance. Now, these are some units and this NM stands for nanometer, which is a ludicrously small value. And uh, let's put this to centimeter and watch what happens and uh, here we have a transparent object finally but uh, it looks really weird because it's simply too dense and that density is controlled with this nd so this nd if you lower this guy this material will become less and less dense so let me first show you and uh, I will tell you some reasonable values for your transparent objects. So, 1.6 is a pretty common value. And in fact, 
1.52 or 51 is an index refraction value of common glass. And you can find various index of refraction values uh, online and uh, for example water is 1.33 and uh, here it is now one concept that is really important is to understand that uh, if you set this to one you will get absolutely nothing here and that is because when this is one nothing refracts Okay, I hope that makes sense. So let's actually visualize that with our dual tool. So when a light is uh, hitting the transparent object or any other object, depending on refraction value, the light will bend. And that is the sole reason why you can actually see the objects because the light is either bent or reflected. If and D equals 1, no refraction will happen. So light will pass and uh, that object will be practically invisible. And a good example of that is uh, air. It has a really low ND value, which roughly equals 1. And that is the reason why you can see through the air, even though you know it is there. So... That's a pretty logical concept, at least I hope so. And uh, the higher the ND, the object is less transparent and more reflective. So at a certain ND, the object will become non-transparent at all. So let's actually try that and see if it is true. So if I set this to 2, it is transparent but uh, a bit dense. At 3, it's really reflective, but it is still transparent. Now, let's go really high. Let's put 100 here. So, as you can see now, even though we instructed Maxwell that it is a transparent object, even though that light has 1 centimeter to travel inside, this object is certainly not transparent. And uh, that is one principle that I want you to understand. So if this is really, really high, let's go with 200. And I'm absolutely sure now that this guy is non-transparent at all. So this ND value plays a major role within your material. Now let's put this to value of 1.52, which is a value of a common glass. And let me explain this attenuation setting. So whenever a light once again hits transparent object, that light ray travels to a certain distance. So let's say maybe this distance. And it all depends on the surface characteristics of objects. And that distance that light is allowed to travel is called attenuation. Okay, so I really hope that makes sense and it has to be some length. It can be either one centimeter or 10 meters or whatever you choose. And there is also one reason why scene scale is very, very important in Maxwell Render. Now let's get rid of that doodle guy and um, let me show you what happens if this transmittance is set to a certain color. And if you want to make sure that these reflectance guys won't do anything to your transparent materials, I suggest you put them to black at first and then later, as we will do in this lesson, set them once you have this transmittance attenuation and ND set. So let's choose uh, maybe this blue greenish like color and uh, as you can see this object is transparent and uh, it is really really dark now this attenuation tells it that after one centimeter it will achieve a full saturation of this color so if you set this to 10 then that 
distance until it reaches full color is 10 centimeters. So as a result, it will be less dark. Okay, you can think of it that way also. So a larger the value here, the object is less dark. Au contrary, if this value is low, then a light that travels inside the object has a tiny space to reach this full color. So if I set this to maybe 20, then that 20 centimeters, and you see I have centimeters here, will be needed for this color to reach its full saturation. Now, this is not really technically correct, but uh, let me show you actually that on this uh, model. So let's apply that material and uh, you notice that uh, I have to select this scene file and uh, enable this file render and uh, there is a few steps that I don't want to do. So for that matter, I'm sure you know that in Cine 4D you can type any command. So I will type Maxwell and uh, I assigned shortcut F to Maxwell fire. So I can simply hit F anytime, but uh, I have to enable this guy. And that will give me this fire preview. So if I stop this, close this window and hit F, I will once again be able to call it with a single shortcut. So that is very useful and I use that a lot and it's a real workflow booster. Now let's uh, do a small render of this guy. And as you can see where this model is uh, thicker, then we have a lot more of that blue color. and. Uh, you can obviously now see the scene scale in action because this guy, let me actually stop this because uh, things are rather slow and I'm recording. So as you can see, this object is colored differently than this one, although they share a same material, so they must be of a different scale. So let's actually try this out. Let's put 50 here and see if there will be a major difference in the material. So let's refresh this and uh, let me stop this. So you can look at this transmittance as a color that will tint your object as deeper as light penetrates. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And uh, it is more than obvious that these two guys are of a different scale. Now, there is one thing that I want to show you and uh, if you haven't noticed so far, let me just uh, re-render this, there are no caustics on this fire preview render, so don't expect them and even if they're here, they're really coarse and uh, they don't correspond to what Maxwell can actually render, so let me actually show you that in a production render and uh, any time is good as other. And do note when I hit this guy that uh, this scene and all materials, everything will be exported to Maxwell render standalone application. So here it is and uh, don't mind all this stuff you are seeing, but rather concentrate on this area and uh, I'm pretty sure you notice this uh, stop button, which is absolutely incredible. So you can stop the render at any time and simply start over again or resume. That is absolutely fantastic. And uh, I believe this feature is unique to Maxwell. And uh, this doesn't mean that you have to resume when Maxwell is open or in other words, can simply stop the rendering, save the scene, even shut down your machine and uh, simply resume later. Now, as you can see here, we have some progress. So this is the sampling level that it managed to reach. And uh, I will actually pause the video just briefly for a minute or two until it clears out sufficiently. So you can see these caustics here in their full glory. And here we are. And uh, I gave it just slightly above five minutes and we managed to reach sampling level of 13 which is uh, if i would have to say which sampling level is needed for glass to look really good and especially these caustics 
I would say something around 17 or 18, but take a look at those caustics. They're absolutely superb and uh, let me try to zoom in a little bit so you can actually see that and if I press P I can actually pan that and uh, let's even try to zoom in once again. So how about that? That is simply spectacular and Maxwell does that all by its own. You don't have to set anything, any photon maps or stuff like that. So absolutely beautiful stuff. Now let's close this and we will explore this Maxwell render standalone application a little bit later, but uh, let's get back to Cine 4D and uh, let me open that guy once again and uh, I think it would be a really good idea to go just briefly over these settings once again. So transmittance is responsible for transparency of the object. So this has to be other than black for object to be transparent. This ND determines how dense that object is. This attenuation simply says the distance that a light is allowed to travel inside the object until it reaches this color or this spectrum of color. To simplify, you saw that our object becomes slightly blue here at the start, but as light penetrates inside it becomes increasingly more dark. So let's actually emphasize that by using maybe five here. You see the preview changed. Let's try once again our fire preview and uh, let's refresh that. And uh, you see where object is more thick, it becomes darker. So we could actually go with one here and this will make a major change. And uh, I think you can see the difference. Okay, let's stop this because it's quite intensive while I'm recording and uh, in our next lesson we're going to talk about materials that are neither solid or transparent and those materials are translucent materials and uh, those guys are done by this section of material editor.